Today's Gospel presents us with the Church's time-honored doctrine concerning forgiveness of injuries and the parable of the forgiving servant who didn't do just that, forgive injuries. Even with his newfound wealth, the forgiven servant says to his fellow servant, pay back what it is you owe. And so, In doing just that, he refuses mercy to another in the same predicament like himself. But the logic of mercy really is very simple, isn't it? Forgive your neighbor's injustice, then your own sins will be forgiven. That's the thesis, not only of today's gospel, but really of all four readings. I say four readings because I'm including the responsorial psalm Psalm 103. And in today's gospel as well, Peter's question and particularly Jesus' reply to it prescribe the spirit of understanding and of mercy that should govern Christian behavior overall. Peter asks our Lord, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times? In the Hebrew language, the figure of 70 times 7 means the same as the word always, huh? Always. So how often must you forgive your brother or sister? Always. St. John Chrysostom, early church father and bishop, says, Our Lord did not limit forgiveness to a fixed number, but rather declared that it must be continuous and forever. So Jesus' response to Peter shows us the contrast between the human person's ungenerous, calculating approach. Because of the fall of the original sin, we want to calculate things automatically. But Jesus' response to Peter shows us the contrast between the human person's calculating, ungenerous approach to forgiveness and God's infinite mercy regarding forgiveness. Why is that? because mercy is who God is, huh? It's love's second name, mercy. God is more interested in our future than in our past. He's more interested in the kind of person we can yet become than in the kind of person we used to be. While indeed taking our sins seriously, no doubt, whether mortal or venial, God never, ever, ever takes those sins as the last word. Why? Because he knows he's made us in his image and likeness. He knows he calls us constantly to a life of his sanctifying grace. And he knows he is our God who is bigger than any sin we might ever forgive or commit, even the most hideous and wicked mortal sin. You know, we Fathers of Mercy are located in the Diocese of Owensboro, Kentucky, and there's a wonderful nursing home known as Carmel Home, ran by the Carmelite Sisters in the actual city of Owensboro, Kentucky. And in the main foyer of Carmel Home, there's a beautifully framed crocheted saying, and it says this, grace is when God does give us what we don't deserve but mercy is when God doesn't give us what we do deserve, period. Grace is when God does give us what we don't deserve. Why? Because grace is always a gratuitous gift on God's part, whether actual or sanctifying grace. But mercy is when God doesn't give us what we do deserve. Forgiveness of our sins. Forgiveness when we are truly penitent, when we experience repentance. And also, mercy is when God doesn't give us what we do deserve. Punishment. Punishment for that sin, whether mortal or venial. And so precisely, his forgiveness is given to us. Today's parable of the unforgiving servant also shows that we are totally in God's debt, again, because 
God's grace is always a gratuitous gift on God's part. Thus, this parable gives us a sure knowledge of the immense value attached to the pardon we receive from God. He's always giving us his mercy. He wants to give us his forgiveness. And today's responsorial psalm, Psalm 103, reminds us of this. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger and rich in compassion. So are we slow to anger and rich in compassion. St. Jose Maria Scriba, the founder of Opus Dei, says, force yourself if necessary. Force yourself if necessary. Always to forgive those who offend you from the very first moment. For the greatest injury or offense that you can suffer from them is as nothing compared with what God has pardoned you. Why is that? Because in the first case, you have the finite forgiving the finite, human person forgiving human person. But in the latter case, you have the infinite forgiving the finite, God forgiving the human person. Overall, this parable today teaches us that we must always forgive our brothers and sisters and must do so wholeheartedly and unreservedly with what a great message this is for today's society, huh? Especially with all the civil unrest. Experience has shown us that the effects and deprivations resulting from unforgiveness can be so devastating, my friends, that they can produce in us a life of utter torture. Matthew 18 is clear about that. Some examples include no longer speaking to a loved one, say a family member, for years no longer speaking to a loved one. Or a pushing of oneself toward an addictive behavior like alcoholism. Or utter hatefulness leading to such things as anger or gossip, calumny, envy, or jealousy. Speaking of anger, I saw a couple of church marquee signs one time. One said, he who angers you controls you. He who angers you controls you. And the other marquee sign said, anger is just one letter away from danger. Anger is just one letter away from danger. Psalm 37 tells us, calm your anger and forget your rage. And from Wednesday night, Compline from Ephesians 4, verses 26 and 27 We read these words, if you are angry, let it be without sin. The sun must not go down on your wrath. Do not give the devil a chance to work on you. And speaking of gossip or calumny, Psalm 39 says, I will be watchful of my ways for fear I should sin with my tongue. I will put a curb on my lips. And Psalm 52 says, your tongue is like a sharpened razor you master of deceit. You love evil more than good, lies more than truth. You love the destructive word, you tongue of deceit. And from Tuesday Night Compline, we read this. From 1 Peter 5, verses 8 and 9, stay sober and alert. Your opponent, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him solid in your faith. The devil always tries to get into the mix, huh? So again, experience has shown us that the effects of and the deprivations resulting from unforgiveness, the main theme of today's readings for this 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time, can be so devastating that they can produce in us a life of utter torture, and we don't want that to happen. And I want to speak just a brief moment about forgiving oneself. We've talked about up till this point about forgiving the other and their injustices toward you. How about forgiveness of self? Maybe because of that past life you used to live. Sometimes we have a hard time moving forward from our own sinful past. You have to forgive yourself. There's five passages from Scripture that I like to quote whenever I talk about this specific subject, the fact that we need to not look back on our past sins, especially those mortal sins, once we've confessed them, huh? Move forward and don't look back. Be healed. 
The first one is Luke 9, verse 62, when our Lord says, quote, no one who puts a hand to the plow and yet keeps looking back is fit for the service in the kingdom of God. The second one is from Philippians 3, verse 13. St. Paul says, I focus on this one thing and one thing only, forgetting the past and looking forward only to what lies ahead. Again, keep moving forward, huh? And 2 Peter 2, verse 22, St. Peter tells us in his second epistle, he says, do not be like a dog that keeps returning to its own vomit, quoting Proverbs 26, 11. Or like a sow, he continues, that after washing returns to wallow in her own mire. Don't keep going back there. Be healed, my brothers and sisters. And John 8, 11 has Jesus telling the woman caught in adultery, go and sin no more. Now, when you tell someone to quote, end quote, go, are you telling them to go forward or are you telling them to go backward? You're telling them to go forward. Go and sin no more. And Isaiah 12, 2 says, I will go forward confidently and not be afraid. God is the source of my strength, the tower of my defense. The Lord has made himself my protector. Words of the prophet Isaiah. I will go forward confidently. Break down that word in the Latin root, con fide, with faith. In other words, we go forward with faith, confidently. And we are not afraid. God is the source of my strength, Isaiah says, the tower of my defense. The Lord has made himself my protector. Mercy is when God does give us what we don't deserve, but mercy is when God doesn't give us what we do deserve. Punishment for that sin, and instead he wants to give us his forgiveness. That's the message of his love and mercy. I close with this. Let forgiveness prosper in your life. Don't let unforgiveness take root. Do not let unforgiveness take root. By choosing to forgive, one chooses a life of miracles, of God's mercy and grace, rather than a life of deprivation and torture. As today's first reading from the book of Sirach sums up nicely, forgive your neighbor's injustice, then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. And the second reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans tells us none of us lives for himself and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. Indeed, we are his, my brothers and sisters. And if we let him, he will lead us into a life of forgiveness and mercy that forgiveness and mercy which we receive from him and so will be able to give back to others in his own image. And so, my friends, in living for the Lord, the Lord himself wants us to receive, practice, and extend forgiveness, mercy, and love rather than deprivation and torture. What a calling this is for today's contemporary world in 2020. Mercy is who God is. It's love's second name. God is more interested in our future than in our past. He's more interested in the kind of person we can yet become than in the kind of person we used to be. While indeed taking our past sins seriously, no doubt whether mortal or venial, God never ever ever takes those sins as the last word. Why? Because he knows he's made us in his image and likeness. He knows he calls us constantly to a life of his sanctifying grace. And he knows he is our God. Mercy is a great gift from God. 
so is his love. So is his grace. Grace is when God does give us what we don't deserve, that gratuitous gift of grace. But mercy is when God doesn't give us what we do deserve, and that is punishment for sin. And instead, he gives us his mercy and love. God bless you.